What's up, y'all? Knight's Edge here again. Got a little, uh, quick little review for you. The CJRB Hectare. Um, this was lent to me by a friend of the channel, Carrie and Cut. I'll have him, uh, I'll comment in the description down below if you want to check him out. Um, it's Carrie and Cut. Uh, he's got a pretty good YouTube channel, and uh, he was nice enough to lend me a couple knives so I can check him out. Did a unboxing video of it, but I'm going to do individual reviews of it, and that's what this is. This is the CJRB Hectare. Um, I've carried it for a few days now, and this is a pretty good little knife. Uh, CJRB is like a budget company, kind of um, Chinese Chinese company. They produce some pretty good knives. Um, They've got a lot of a lot of their newer stuff has been really really big hits, especially the pyrite. Um, they're kind of mastering the their little uh, button lock game with the pyrite. Pyrite is uh, definitely a what you would call an evergreen knife. It, it's uh, used and made in many formats, many colors, many steels, many handle materials. And I think this could be just like that, really. Uh, there's a couple of different versions of this. I'll also have them linked down in the description below. But this is the CJRB Hectare, H-E-C-T-A-R-E. -E. I'll have it spelled out and linked and everything down in the description. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into specs here. So tape measure, overall. All right, overall, tip of the blade to the hilt of the handle the butt end of the handle there you're looking at right at seven and a quarter maybe just a hair over seven and a quarter blade length looking at three and uh, right at three and a quarter on the on the blade length cutting edge thanks to the forward choil finger choil um right about two and seven eighths on that uh on that cutting edge I'm going to do some size comparisons here. That's the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Spyderco Para 3. So more along the lines of the size of the uh, Para 3. But like with a little bit more cutting edge than the Para 3. Definitely smaller than the Paramilitary 2. Get a couple more out here. Hogue. Ritter, Ritter Hogue, RSK MK1 and G10, Hogue Deca, right? So more along the lines of the size of the Hogue Deca, kind of like what I would call a medium-sized knife. Um, that's what it is on this channel. A lot of people would disagree with that, whatever. But to me, this is a full-size, large, uh, you know, full-size knife. This is more along the lines of like a, a smaller, medium-sized knife. Not small, you know. But uh, anyway, that's kind of my little spiel for naming knife sizes, I guess. Here it is against the QSB Penguin. All right, so right about the same size as the Penguin, maybe a little bit longer than the Penguin. Uh, Penguin's definitely, eh, well, I wouldn't say definitely. I think the Penguin's got a beat with cutting edge there, different blade shape. So kind of comparing you know, apples to oranges, but um. Uh, Put that up here is uh, another CJRB. This is the only CJRB I own right now. Um, I've had a couple of different ones, but currently this is the only one I own. This is the Pyrite. And uh, a lot of similar similarities between that and the Pyrite. You know, you kind of got like a lot of the same ergonomic lines going on. Um, blade shape is eh, a little similar, not really so much. You know, um, thumb studs here, open and hold there, um, button. That's a crossbar lock, so enough differences to, you know, definitely say they're, you know, and they have different interests for different people, but that's the, that's uh, pretty much like a good size comparison, I would say, to the heck there, as far as uh, CJRB's lineup would be the, the Pyrite, because it's, it's pretty similar in size. Put that up. All right, so we'll go ahead and get out the calibers here. Make sure they zeroed out this time. Blade stock thickness coming in 104 thousandths. That's the thickest part of the spine. And 104, 103 and a half thousandths. 
right there along the belly, cutting edge, um, 21 thousandths there, um, 26 thousandths. So fairly slicey knife. Um, go ahead and zero that out. Put it on the handle. So look at that with the handle. 0 0.41 of an inch. That's pretty good. You know, it's not exceptionally thin where it, uh, it's kind of uncomfortable and it's not exceptionally wide and bulky. So I would say that's a pretty good size for, for the, uh, for the handle thickness there. Um, let's see, do the hardware check. Get my torques a bit. All right. So this is, this is a T8 right here. Go ahead and show you that. T8, all right. So we'll check the body screws. Body screws, T8. Check the pocket clip screws. Pocket clip screws, I think they're T6s. Double check that. Yeah, it's T6. Yeah, pocket clip screws, definitely T6. That's no big deal. Um, pivot. Let's check the pivot. See what size the pivot is here. I think it's a T8. Yeah, T10 is too big. Pivot's a T8. All right, that's good. Body screws and uh, pivot screw, same size, you know, and uh, only time you'll need a T6 is on the pocket clip. That's not too bad. Uh, let's see. As far as that goes, I get it. It's not a, a captive pivot, so... You know, I would, it's always a plus to have a captive pivot, but, you know, not necessary. You know, I mean, most people that buy knives aren't going to, you know, your average everyday guy that buys a knife to use or whatever, he's not going to disassemble it ever, really, a lot of times. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I would encourage that, you know, it helps you get familiar with it and it's good for, you know, maintenance, taking them apart, cleaning them, stuff like that, but. Um, the captive pivot deal is not really like a deal breaker. It's just a really nice thing to have and it, it helps out whenever you're disassembling the, the knife. So what's next here? We got the scale. Got the scale here and it's pretty lightweight. Um, as far as weight goes, it, it's, you know, when, when I put it in the, in my pocket, it's not, uh, it's not really like a factor at all, you know, it, it's a pretty good weight for this knife. So I don't know, I'd probably guess around eh, about three and a half ounces. Let's see what it's at. Well, I was way off, 2.7. Pretty light, you know, um, right at or just under the ounce and inch ratio at 2.7. Double check that. Yeah, 2.7. So that's really good. Um, if you, if you, uh, if you're a big fan of the ounce and inch ratio, uh, as far as pocket knives go, and uh, you need a lightweight knife, that, that's not bad, not bad at all. So, here's old blue jeans, get them out, do the carry check here. And get CJ's R, this is a CJRB standard pocket clip, which I'm not the biggest fan of. To me, it's a little better than Civivi's, but you know, not my much. Um, not a horrible pocket clip, you know, um, but not really the best. Uh, the fact that it's deep carry is good, in my opinion. You know, it's a, it's a good thing about it. So, put the blue jeans back up. So, all in all, um, this is a, I would say, I would consider this a budget knife. You know, um, if you look on, I'm looking on CJRB's website right now, and I'll have all that linked down in the description, but, uh, on the CJRB website, it's coming in at uh, forty nine, yeah, forty nine ninety nine, and they got like a little discount thing running right now. I think where it takes a couple bucks off, but you know, for a little under fifty bucks, uh, that's not too bad at all, really, for this knife. I, I I really like this knife. I like the action on it. Um, crossbar lock right there. It's got good tension on it. The detent. This thing pulls hard, right? After it's locked out, whenever you slide it back, let me see if I can recreate that. So, 
not really going anywhere, right? Kind of stiff. It's not definitely not drop shut, you know, if that's what you're looking for, but it's a crossbar lock, so whenever you push this, if you can hear it, it does that. Kind of a clicky, clickety clackety mechanical sound. Uh, not too dissimilar from the sound that the Shark Lot makes on the AD 20.5, if you're familiar with that. Um, this, uh, I like the opening hole. It's to me positioned in a pretty good spot. No problems at all deploying it. Great spot for that. You can uh, slow roll it, uh, middle finger flick it, thumb flick, uh, roll it out. You know, um, you can also pull the lot back like that, open it like that, which I don't know if that's bad for it or not. I, I really, I feel like it is just uh, inherently. So I, I would, I would encourage not to do that, especially when this thing's such a good uh, middle finger flicker. You know, it's, it's not a bad knife to open like that at all. Um, it's a good size, just under three inches. You got the sharpening choil slash finger choil. Um, I got medium to large uh, hands, I guess. I, I wear a large glove normally. So, um, choked up on it. It's right there at it whenever your finger's right there. When your index is right there, you're almost kind of riding on that little spot right there. They could have maybe... I did a little contouring on that maybe compared to uh, compared to the rest of it and it, it's not contoured quite as well I don't think maybe they could have uh, taken off an extra I don't know 16th even of an inch just to give you just a little bit more room but it, it that would take a little bit away from cutting edge so I kind of get that but I think it would be a little bit more ergonomic if that were the case now to me this thing feels pretty good in the hand you know choked up like that it's not bad at all like you're, you're borderline it right there on that on that cutting edge but it's not you know it's not touching maybe if your hands were larger or whatever um that would be a possibility um and it wouldn't be as comfortable but for my size hands no problem there you know, choke back's fine too you get a full purchase on it like that pinky's back here Feels pretty good. I like the uh, the the G10 is uh, kind of like a, a rough course uh, G10, but it it feels not bad at all, really. Uh, I like that the jimping. It's got jimping up here for your thumb. That that makes cutting and slicing a lot easier. As far as pinch cuts go, uh, middle finger here, thumb here, or index on the top, doing it, pinch cutting it. Um, that, that feels pretty good to me. Uh, it's a good, comfortable position for it. Uh, the steel on this is AARPM9. Pretty good for a budget knife. Anything that's under 70 or so dollars, AARPM9 is not too bad of a steel at all. You know, the only thing I would, I can think of that I would prefer more so than that would be maybe, uh, I don't know, 14C, 28N. But AARPM9 is a paddle powder metallurgy still and you don't really see those that much for budget knives you know any any knife that's under 50 100 bucks or whatever you're not going to really see a powder metallurgy steel um like that and i'm pretty sure that's what aarpm9 is uh not a metallurgist definitely double check that i could be wrong but um it, it is a, a a pretty good steel especially for the price the grind on it's really nice. It's almost uh, what I would say is a full flat, you know, kind of by definition, it comes down as a deep hollow from up here, but it's almost a full flat grind. A nice little finish on it, belt satin finish on this particular one. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they do make them in other coatings. I know they make them in other, uh, other handle colors. But for the price, this is, to me, a, a, a pretty good knife. It actually surprised me. Um, I like the blade shape. A lot of people do. A lot of people don't. Whatever. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the 9, Quiet Carry 9. A little bit, you know, with the blade shape. Um, opening method, solid. Lock, solid. You know, uh, as far as negatives on the knife, like I said, you know, it would be good to have T6 on the pocket clip. Not necessary. It would be good to have a captive pivot. Not necessary. Um, maybe if this was kind of cut out a little bit more right there towards the end, that would be good. But that's also 
not a deal breaker at all. It's not like it, it's uh, dangerous or it cuts into your, you know, it's discomforting or anything like that. This is a pretty solid little knife, especially for the price. Um, I, I actually was thinking about buying one of these after handling it. And, uh, you know, that, that's that's saying a lot. For a $50 knife, uh, pretty good. Uh, I, I, drank, I drank it probably about an 88, you know. Uh, 88, 90 on, on my scale, if that means anything. Um, that, that's how I'm feeling about it at this moment. Pretty good knife. CJ over here, heck there. Uh, I'll have it linked down below. And I'll also have Carry and Cut linked down below if you guys want to go check him out. Great channel. He's got really good content. Mike's a great dude. So, anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Been the Night's Edge. I really appreciate you guys watching the video, especially if you made it this far in it. It means a lot. Uh, hit the like button. Helps a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll definitely have some more content coming for you guys. Thanks, and have a good day.